Hi, this is Giovanni. This is a tutorial on advanced track slicing. Um, advanced is a bit ambiguous. It, it's just uh, it's a method I use to aid in slicing the tracks, and I use it because I slice the tracks in a in a way that is not um, geometrically perfect. So using a top-down wireframe view to slice the track is just way too difficult. Um, I like to use uh, the respective view with the texture applied and I like to see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Now to do this I, I need to change the textures. So what you see is my material editor all my material IDs as they are you know as they would be in the TDF. I'm going to go into each one. I'm going to go into DirectX 9 select the color and change it from the dirt track texture to a solid color texture. Uh, any of the colors that I have in my working directory. Um, if you remember, these colors were put in there in the very beginning, and they they kind of they kind of travel with me throughout all my projects. Um, they, these colors also end up getting used for you know texturing solid color surfaces on on random objects throughout your you know the the the, the track that you build. But for now, I'm just going in and, and setting each material ID to a solid color. Um, once I'm done here, uh, the track is currently hidden, just, I don't know, so it doesn't confuse me visually. But <laughs> I'm going to unhide it here real soon. Uh, you can see I, d I did a couple of things. I, I started to cut the uh, bottom of the straight and the, turn, the bottom of the turns uh, on one end of the track. Uh, I was recording, and I think I accidentally deleted that part of video, so whatever. It, that part's already been done from, uh, from where we left off on the last tutorial. Now, this is all the same, you know. There, this isn't, you know, mad science. It's just selecting polygons and assigning material IDs to them. That's that's track slicing in its entirety. Where where it can become more advanced is is in the, the shape of your material ID allocation, the shape of your slice. Um, I'm not creating polygons. I'm not duplicating or cutting polygons. I'm just taking the ones that that we made available to us, uh, you know, for this particular track mesh, we did it in bobs, um, and uh, I'm assigning material IDs. Now, if if this doesn't interest you, or this just seems like way too much work for a simple track, then you know, there is no rule that says you have to do this to have a good racetrack. Not not remotely. Um, this is just something that I enjoy doing because it's you know, as a hobby, I, I enjoy trying to. Uh, cut the track and grip it in such a way that it drives more lifelike. Um, there's going to be tracks where to drive more lifelike, uh, having this, you know, you know, abnormal cut shape isn't going to get get us where we want to go. Um, and then there's going to be tracks where this is exactly what it needs. So the the track is done. It's cut. Um, I'm exporting the track with the color textures. Uh, it's called Tutter underscore track. That was just the track name that I used. And I intentionally want to keep keep that object uh, for future use here. Now I'm going to go through and reassign each one of these textures that we changed back to the dirt texture that we had. Now you see me doing a whole lot of extra stuff in the background, some copy and pasting. I, I actually closed this project and reopened it in Max and I lost some information. So I got to do a little extra work in the background, but had you not closed Max and you, and you just picked up where you know you were finished your slice, you would just go back in, reset all those materials to dirt. And now I'm changing the object name. This is this is important um, to something else. I mean, these object names can always be changed. They're just file names. But I changed this to Tutter underscore Heat, so it wouldn't overwrite the track with the with the colored squares. Now. Now that we have two different track uh, track meshes, uh, we have two different uh, yeah, we have two different meshes that are identical in shape. Um, they'll react identically to any TDF adjustments. Uh, the, their difference is their their actual name, their file name, and the textures that they apply that you see for DirectX 9. Assuming that's what you're you know you're using. So I'm going to copy those two new objects we just exported. I'm going to put them into Bob's Track Builder. Um, the the dirt heat textures that I created are already there. All of our colored textures are there as well. 
and all we have to do now is open up the SCN file and call one of our tracks whichever we choose this is the cool part what I'll do is I will set my SCN which it currently is tutter underscore heat that's going to uh, load the track with the dirt texture I can go out in the track run a batch of laps around the bottom run some around the top middle I can you know vary my line just trying to be clean and, and trying to drive it fast you know drive it the way it feels like it should be driven uh, and then I'm gonna leave the track open up this SCN change the instance call to tutter underscore track which was the object that had the color textures the solid colors go back into R factor and simply go into my replay now my replay will load with the goofy looking colored texture as opposed to the dirt so I can actually watch my car going around the track on a replay on a crazy looking colored track and see if my cut lines match up to where the car is driving this is really really helpful so you know let's say that looking from the top down I, I totally missed where the corner entries were like I'm way off I can go back into max re you know move my cut lines move remove my cut around a little bit export the track again you know it's just this you know some extra clicks and some you know it's a little bit of work over in the material editor and then you know go back into the replay again without running any more laps and with the newly cut track see if my lines match up to where the car naturally wants to be driven around the track um, now obviously you would have to have your TDF all ready to go uh, with all the material IDs uh, called in it and you know a grip level that's something close to what the car wants as opposed to the, the 1.0 that is in a standard R factor track but you get the idea that you can you can use those colors to kind of narrow the focus a little bit and, and really know where the the lines are on the track and you know how they correspond to where the vehicles naturally want to drive around the track um, once you've got that where you want it you can you know for make sure you have dirt on it make sure your bump and spec maps are, are are mapped properly to the proper channel and export it and get working on the TDF and and all the unfun stuff like the AIW and the camera file um, it, you know this is just my method uh, it works for me it's fun um, I, I get good results for the most part out of it uh, you may find that something else works for you or you're just not interested in doing this which which is fine as well but hopefully there was something in there that kinda you know gives you some ideas or maybe you think of another way to do things or something else to try that that works better and uh, hopefully you'll share that um, I'd be happy to learn something new as well so uh, good luck making your tracks and have fun